People are constantly looking for that magic supplement that will significantly extend lifespan and boost health. Well, we don't need to wait for the next scientific breakthrough. We already have something like this that's found in abundance in certain foods, and its effects are so dramatic that it almost does seem like magic. It can cut our overall death risks by a massive 23%, and increasing our intake can add years to our lives even if we start late. Yet if we don't use it correctly, we might do more harm than good. In this video, I'll reveal the powerful ingredient, its surprising benefits, and how you can easily incorporate it into your diet in the right way for a longer, healthier life. And if you want weekly health research summaries and health strategies that I share with my patients, sign up using the link in the pinned comment. We've known for some time that certain food components can dramatically impact our health, but an intriguing study published just last year provides us fresh evidence for how big this impact can actually be. That study was a massive meta-analysis. It included 64 separate studies involving 3.5 million people. The researchers found that higher consumption of one key food component cut all-cause mortality risk by 23%. But there are some mistakes many people make when it comes to incorporating this key component into their diets. The key component is fibre, and again, if we don't get it right, it can significantly worsen our gut health. So I'm going to explain the right way to approach it to maximise its benefits. But first, let's dive a bit deeper into what those benefits are. All-cause mortality is like a big snapshot picture of our health. When we zoom in, we uncover a surprisingly strong effect of fibre in the most important areas of our health. The first is inflammation. Inflammation isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it's our body's natural defense response to things like injuries and infections. It's a complex process where the body fights off infection and repairs damaged tissue. But then there's chronic inflammation. This is where the inflammation response is ongoing even when there isn't a specific injury or infection. And this persistent inflammation is linked to serious health problems like heart disease and Alzheimer's. It also contributes to aging. Increased fiber intake combats this inflammation. The data we have reveals a strong association between more fiber and lower chronic inflammation. For example, one study of patients with arthritis found that high fiber diets produced several positive changes. It increased chemicals that fight inflammation while decreasing those that cause it. Fiber also helps fight heart disease. Large studies of people over a long period of time consistently find that those who eat more fiber have fewer heart attacks and strokes. One systematic review and meta-analysis looked at 22 studies involving over 300,000 participants. It found that for each 7 gram per day increase in fiber intake, reduced the risk of heart disease by 9%. And we know that heart disease and strokes have several important risk factors. One of them is high blood pressure. Increased pressure stresses our blood vessels, promoting inflammation and the formation of plaque. Fiber helps here too. A meta-analysis of randomized clinical trials examined the use of flaxseed supplements, which is a potent source of fiber. Overall, this boost in fiber intake led to an average reduction in blood pressure of almost 3 units. When researchers considered just those trials that lasted longer than 12 weeks, the effects were even greater. The average reduction here was over 3 units. But does lowering your blood pressure by 3 units actually make a difference? Well, the short answer is yes. A systematic analysis of studies on blood pressure and cardiovascular risk includes some eye-opening numbers. Clinical trials show a reduction of blood pressure by just 10 units cuts the risk of coronary heart disease by 22% and strokes by a whopping 41%. Another risk factor for heart disease is high blood LDL cholesterol. Fiber helps here too. It blocks the absorption of cholesterol by the gut. A large meta-analysis of nearly 200 randomized clinical trials found that fiber supplementation significantly reduced LDL cholesterol by an average of 3 units relative to controls. Each 5 gram per day increase in soluble fiber reduced LDL cholesterol by about 5 units. Overall then, increasing fiber intake is a powerful strategy to slash risks for heart attacks and strokes. Another essential area when it comes to health is weight. We know that being overweight is associated with higher risks of death from all causes. As one study put it, an elevated body mass index is connected to almost every category of death outcomes. So being overweight poses serious health risks to our health, and the higher our BMI, the greater those risks. But losing weight is not easy. Here's how fiber can help. It helps to reduce our hunger and increases our feelings of fullness. When people are free to eat what they want, people tend to eat less when fiber is increased. But how much less? Well, one review of published studies found that consuming an extra 14 grams of fiber per day for more than two days is associated with a 10% decrease in calories eaten. 
and this translated into a weight loss of 1.9 kilograms or about 4 pounds over 3.8 months. For obese individuals, the drop in calories and resulting weight loss were even greater. Think about that for a moment. This is a proven weight loss strategy that doesn't involve trying to eat less. Instead, it's about shifting what we eat to include more fiber. And incredibly, the effects here happened whether people were getting fiber from food or as a supplement. Plus, fiber improves blood sugar regulation and insulin sensitivity. So why does this matter? Well, stable blood sugar levels help to reduce food cravings and reduce the storage of excess fat. They also seem to reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. A 2014 meta-analysis sought to quantify this impact. It found that those who consumed the most amount of fiber had a dramatic 34% risk reduction of type 2 diabetes compared to those who ate the least. Finally, fiber helps to restore a proper balance of one of the most important systems, our gut. Fiber is the primary fuel for our gut bacteria, and a diverse, healthy microbiome is increasingly recognized as important for immune function and anti-inflammatory effects. Fiber feeds our gut bacteria, which in turn produce short-chain fatty acids. These strengthen the gut barrier and reduce inflammation throughout the body. They also help to regulate immune function. For this and other reasons, fiber helps to protect us against a deadly killer. It's the third most common cancer in men and second most common in women. A large body of research shows that there's an inverse relationship between how much fiber we eat and colorectal cancer. This is an amazing range of benefits for a single food component, and in a moment we'll look at another simple component that we can pair with fiber to amplify the health gains. But first we need to look at potential problems with fiber. We don't necessarily want to run out and start eating tons more, and here's why. One study found some surprising results with fiber. It involved 63 people who struggled with constipation. They were also experiencing other symptoms like bloating and abdominal pain. Researchers had them drastically lower their fiber intake, and then they looked at their symptoms at the one-month mark and the six-month mark. Those who went to a no or low fiber diet saw their symptoms improve significantly. The no fiber group eliminated bloating altogether. So for these patients, it seemed like high fiber diets were causing the problem. So what's going on here? After all, lots of studies have shown that high fiber intake is usually a way to relieve constipation. But here's the important point. There are a number of health conditions that can lead to poor tolerance of fiber. For example, irritable bowel syndrome or Crohn's disease. In these cases, we might need to restrict fiber intake to manage these symptoms. This doesn't alter the fact that for most people, high fiber diets are healthy. What it does mean though is that we need to pay attention to our bodies. If we're increasing fiber but running into problems, it's a good idea to see a doctor to adjust our intakes and figure out the underlying cause. Even for those of us with no underlying problems, we can experience symptoms like gas, bloating, and constipation if we don't approach fiber in the right way. So what do we need to watch out for? Well, I give my patients two guidelines. The first is to increase fiber intake slowly. If we've only been eating, say, 5 grams a day, we don't necessarily want to jump to 30 grams a day. We need to give our body time to adjust. The second is to drink plenty of water. Fiber absorbs water as it passes through our digestive tract, and that's a good thing as it helps to soften our stools. But increasing fiber intake without getting enough water can lead to dehydration, and this can have the opposite effect on our stools. Now, a moment ago, I mentioned another food element that we can pair with fiber to boost its benefits. So what is this additional element and what can it do for us? Well, for one thing, it also helps with weight control. Scientists have found that getting plenty of this food component in our diets helps us feel full and it reduces our cravings. It also has an additional benefit. It stimulates our bodies to burn more fat. So what food element am I talking about? I'm talking about protein. Not only does it help people lose weight, but a high protein diet helps to keep that lost weight off. Moreover, just like with high fiber diets, high protein diets are associated with lower risks of death. A large systematic review found that higher protein intake was connected to a 6% lower all-cause mortality risk. Intriguingly, that association was even stronger if the proteins came from plant sources. That's a particularly interesting result because it brings together the two food elements that we've been talking about in this video, protein and fiber. So what are the best foods that combine protein and fiber together? Legumes are a great place to start. 100 grams of cooked lentils, for instance, contains an impressive 18 grams of protein and 15.6 grams of fiber per cup. Chickpeas are similar. Other great options are things like broccoli and Brussels sprouts, whole grains like quinoa and oats, nuts, seeds, and avocados. 
Even when we pay careful attention to our diet, however, it can be a challenge to get enough fibre. The typical recommendation of fibre intake is at least 25 to 32 grams per day. That's why I've included 2.5 grams of psyllium husk in the new Microvitamin Plus powder. Psyllium husk is a soluble fibre. It's a common fibre source as a supplement and it's been widely studied. Research shows that it's effective in relieving constipation, reducing cholesterol and helping with weight management, along with other benefits. But just because I take a supplement does in no way mean that you should as well. There is a third food component that's just as significant as the two that we've gone through in this video, and prioritizing all three is the secret to a best possible diet. So make sure to check out this next video here to find out what is this third food component that we should include and some suggestions about the best sources of all three.